Schwein, Schwein. Hello, beautiful people on the other side of the screen. You are now tuned in to Audio Tree Live. Today is Tuesday, October 17th, and I am your host, Psalm One. Happy 1017 day to all Gucci Mane fans who observe the holiday. If you're sitting out there watching Audio Tree videos and you're not subscribed, this is a tragic thing. You need to do the right thing now and subscribe. It literally takes one little smush of a finger and it's done. And while you're at it, follow Audio Tree on Spotify, Bandcamp, or wherever you bang your music. Today, we have Simon Spine in studio straight out of Brooklyn, New York City, hitting that sweet spot between experimental and accessible thought-provoking and danceable. These crazy kids have embraced left-of-center electronic boosted electronic boosted indie rock and turned it all the way on its tits. I might cry on the dance floor today. I might lie to an ex-girlfriend today. Who knows? We'll get into it and find out. Ladies, ladies, and gentlemen, please welcome Simon Spine.
We're here with Noah, Sarah, Brother Michael, Peter, and Zeb performing as Simon Spine. Welcome to Audio Tree. What's up, Sam? No, just chilling, listening to some dance music before <laughs> noon. Got me moving and shit. It's like coffee. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for coming. Thanks for having us. How's tour been? You're on tour right now, so how, how's it been? It's good. It's been a party. It's yeah? yeah? It's been a long, fun ride in a Chrysler Voyager. <laughs> Um, a lot of, we've been kind of eating raw spinach like it's potato chips to kind of stay healthy. <laughs> but then also going works. so far the opposite direction. Yeah. We ate deep dish before our gig last night. For last night. Yeah. When and when. Yeah, it was a mistake. Sleep. For sure. yeah, <laughs> but we, it was we didn't really feel good. good. It was delicious, though. It was delicious. It is delicious. Not the best to eat before dancing and stuff. Yeah. And we, were, we were all doing that. You know, when like your eyebrows are high but you're you can't open your eyes and oh yeah no i'm totally ready to play <laughs> <laughs> have the crowds been dancing as much as i am imagining them to be dancing typically yeah, yeah. we did do we played one show in sort of a beer hall to a seated audience and it's 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 a little weird it's a little <laughs> yeah, weird for yeah. it's a little strange but you know it's good practice um, I saw you all kind of practicing some moves, but it was some from TikTok. I I, I imagine you you were saying the the Harry Potter. Yeah, TikTok we've been into series. those TikToks where it's like uh, through like computer animated uh, Harry Potter characters <laughs> voguing like to the Harry. to the <laughs> yeah to the uh, words from Harry Potter movies. You gotta love that AI. It's so good. Who's the best dancer in this stuff. band though? Uh, Are I, any of us good at dancing? Zeb. I think I'd, I'd put my hat on Zeb. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'd probably guess Zeb. Wow, I'm like really bad at dancing, so that's yeah, like. Well, it's not, oh, okay. You know, it's well, Zeb's most bar. handsome, so he gets you just it. look good. Sarah's doing a good it. dancer. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Michael is no problem, buddy. So weird. 
I want to see some choreo next time. Yeah, so, no. y'all you say that. Yeah. No, I do. I want to see it. I want to see it. it. Good or bad or okay. right in the middle. I want to okay. see it. It'll be bad. <laughs> It'll be bad. It'll be bad. <laughs> to take a left turn from dancing and kind of staying still, Sarah, you were kind of meditating mm. in the middle of the room before we went live. Mm -hmm. I love that you centered yourself around all this insanity. <laughs> um, what other mindfulness practices do you have on the road? Uh, journaling is a big one. Um... I don't know, though. I feel like I go in and out of being mindful and being <laughs> just totally unhinged. <laughs> that's, a, that's a balanced way of doing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Anybody else? Any yoga? Any chanting? Um, Spinach, I, I saw. I sometimes do this thing where I need a lot of space uh, in my life. And as I previously stated, we're in a Chrysler Voyager. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite crowded in there. So I like doing this thing where I put my jacket over my head. <laughs> to kind of give myself a cocoon to kind of... I put on my headphones and my jacket over my head and then I just kind of... Yeah, the jacket bubble yeah. world. We swear yeah. that he likes us. I love these guys. In moderation. <laughs> Rolls eyes <laughs> off camera. I um, always meditate before the gig. I went, I went into like... I found an office and I started meditating and then I had to... I was like, I, I need to talk to the people in this office so they know that I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, I'm okay. They're like, cool. Go, cool, thanks. <laughs> yeah, some, some people are still kind of like put off by meditating. Like, what the hell are you doing? I realize you have to do this thing with your, if you do this thing with your face, then people don't. Like, if you look like. <laughs> <laughs> That's your meditation face? People think that you seem peaceful, but yeah. like, I usually look really upset when I'm meditating. Not because I'm upset, but just I'm serious. You just have resting upset face. Yeah, when I was in, when we were in England last year, I was like meditating in a field and, and this kid came up and was like, you okay? You look sad. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm okay. Thanks for asking. He's like, I don't care. He, he walked away. It was weird. It was weird. Tough um, love. I would imagine um, overseas, those those audiences are really, really into you and really kind of going crazy. Uh, uh, at least like the three 55-year-old British yeah. men. Yes. Yeah. You do really so well with three. the like people that were music snobs in the 80s. Well, I remember in Paris, like, they were eating out of our hands. Like, it was one of the craziest shows ever. And I feel like usually you have, like, a 15-minute statute of limitations for being cool after a show. And then in Paris, the, like, literally 10 seconds after the show, they wanted nothing to do with us. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, we're not cool anymore. Au revoir. Yeah. Yeah. I, had, I had a different like... experience. People were just talking in French to me as if I could understand. And I was just like... <laughs> I don't speak, but they keep going. I guess yeah, just like, nobody so liked me either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just Zen. Yeah, maybe this is me projecting my experience <laughs> into all of you guys. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> nobody ever wants to talk to me after yeah, the show. Yeah, I'm like, so chill. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to talk about, really, though, after the after show? Sure. What do you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, you don't want to end up in... You don't want to end up in party jail. Yeah. yeah. I always ask people like, so like, what's your schedule looking like then tomorrow <laughs> next year? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know where to go. With yeah. Sarah really like flips the power in the situation. They, they're good at that. I feel Thanks. like when you have it, you'll, you'll look somebody straight in the eyes and ask them a really personal question. And they'll be like, oh. <laughs> what is your social security number? Yeah. <laughs> That's the best one. Uh, speaking of parties, tell me about Secret Friend. Um, are y'all still doing these parties? Yeah, I reckon we'll get it. We, we took a break. We took a break. Um, but yeah, we, we, for years, were doing these parties with our friends at this magazine called Pond. And the whole idea was we'd have an artist build an installation in, a, in sort of a nightclub environment. And we'd play, we'd bring people in to play kind of like dance-centric music but ideally kind of left of center people doing things live or doing things a little bit off the beaten path but yeah sarah before sarah was in the band they dj'd at least one of them and played one and yeah yeah yeah, yeah really, it was really good fun. time we got to get back into it we had a covid scare at the the last one that we were gonna do and it just bummed us out so much that we just yeah, that was rough. i was like i i don't want to <laughs> throw events anymore it's scary i don't think it counts yeah. as a covid scare if i got COVID. Yeah, it was a COVID <laughs> hack. Was co a COVID fact. It was a COVID fact. Yeah. 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 yeah, we learned about during sound check. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, scare, it scare it makes it sound like there was like any possibility that it wasn't COVID. Also, Sarah, to circle back for a second, right. I actually, at Otis, I got the, some of the guys that became friends with Beer yelling our socials at each other at the same time as a bonding exercise after the show. <laughs> nice. By socials, you mean social security number? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> just as loud as you can. Yeah. yeah. It really built a lot of trust between us. It's awesome. Explain it, the notepads. <laughs> it feels as though you were able to possibly procure, procure, it's a big word, procure <laughs> the kind of like pre-pandemic fun of years past. Um, do you even try to do that anymore? Or you just go in with the music and just like see what happens? Because it just seems like it's like BC yeah. and now it's mm. during COVID, but yeah. yeah. But the, you know, dancing and dance music, it just felt like for a few years at the beginning of the pandemic, it was like unheard of. So um, it feels as though people want to dance again. And yeah. Yeah, were, I want were, to. did you? Yeah, were, were you finding it hard to kind of come up with what became your 2021 album? Um, n we wrote most of Charismatic Megafauna before before COVID, and it came out during COVID. And then on our next record, we were like fully quarantined up, thinking of like remembering dancing, and I think that was actually pushed us even further into that direction. But yeah, I don't know. I think. We were all pretty active in the kind of like New York DJ and dance music scene before COVID. And I think that, you know, we still are in ways, but, but I, for me, I became a lot more, I stopped to like, it started to become really stressful for me to be in large crowds, obviously. And that never really went away. I still like, if people bump into me while I'm dancing, it really just throws like, what me are you off. Doing? So I just do it like way, I just don't go out as, as often as I did. I'm a little more intentional about it. Sure. Still love it, but I already started working in nightclubs post COVID. Yeah, true. So the total opposite. Yeah. Post slash during I think COVID. I just got really used to like sleeping so much yeah. during COVID that I am kind of like, oh, going out and dancing at midnight. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of in that. Point. But it does give me so much joy to do it. Charismatic megafauna is so fun to say, and the biological concept is fascinating as well. Um, it has to do with the pizzazz an animal has, yeah. right? Um, marketability, real, lions, tigers, bears, oh my. Um, what are some of the like less marketable animals that you you know you have an affinity for? Like maybe like biomes and like you know like uh, <laughs> Do you really? uh, bu like bugs. Well, I I don't I wouldn't say I have an affinity for them, but they're very important. Yeah, you know? sure. I think that's what that that phrase was something I heard my dad say. He's a biologist, and I just thought it was such a funny like uh, like salty thing. He he studies lizards, and he has a coworker that studies flies, and another one that studies giants. So when you're like really just like in the weeds with one specific weird animal. I just thought it was such a funny thing to be like, oh, everybody cares about the pandas, but nobody <laughs> wants to talk about earthworms. It's really important, you know? I, I was thinking about how that parallels music, right? Like yeah. there's marketable, more marketable bands, and then the lesser known bands that maybe not are as sexy, but are still important to the ecosystem <laughs> of music, you yeah. know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah um, we try to be as unsexy as possible. Yeah. And well, you're failing. <laughs> yeah, so. <it> work. <laughs> Your next album, the one that's coming out in 2024. Mm -hmm. What can we expect? Because I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing some, again, very cool bass lines, very cool concepts, and things that you might not think about as far as dance music is concerned. Can you mm -hmm. give us a little bit more of a uh, uh, verbal? sort of explanation about that what's going on with the new album um i'm not the person to answer <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I don't know i mean it's it's definitely our most unhinged album okay ever yeah. we, we were kind of there's a lot happening in the world that was really scary we were also really grateful to be um we had kind of potted up and we were quarantining together and so and it was like, I, when we wrote a lot of these songs, it was autumn and it was beautiful out and everything felt so fucked. And there's this really like, we we were playing with that, uh, that contradictory feeling a lot on the record. You know, the the beauty around us and also feeling like this sort of existential dread. And sure. um, yeah, and it's ultimately like a pretty happy album. You know, it's cathartic, like it deals with heavy stuff, but... But the idea with Simon Spine is usually to like end somewhere uplifting. So I'd say it's still an optimistic album. But yeah, it's a little more 
it feels a little crazy. We felt kind of crazy. Yeah, I, a, I think there's a lot more like it, it sounds more like a live album, like how we sound live, and it's built more around our, um, you know, our live instrumentation, and it's a bit more unhinged, I think, than definitely than charismatic megafauna. Yeah, that's true. Also, I think ironically because we couldn't play live, we were obsessed with we we're remembering playing live, and we're kind of like, man, that was so putting that into so it. Yeah, yeah, we were thinking about writing songs that would be fun to play live, and that comes out, I think. Um, well, your next song on your set list, I've been waiting for the whole time. It is my jam, the bass line, the chants, the exercising. It is the best. Um, so when y'all are ready, uh, let's get into that. Let's do it. <coughs> How y'all feeling? I feel good. You want to start us off with a little scream, Sarah? I want to yeah. my volume turned down. You guys Everybody ready? ready? It's going to get loud. I won't do it straight into the mic, okay? All right, let's fucking do it.
big thank you to Simon Spine for blessing us today and as always major love to everyone here at Audio Tree spreading the gospel of live music this squishy group of dance freaks are on tour right now but they'll do more shows so make sure to grab tickets to see them when they're in your area also get into all their music including their latest remix joint Charismatic Mutations and be on the lookout for their new album they played a couple tracks off that in this session and it sounds amazing so be on the lookout for their new album coming out early 2024 once again, likes are good, but subscribing to Audio Tree means you get these dope videos at the top of your feed whenever they drop, so please make sure to do that. Get cool merch at audiotree.shop, and if you want the session audio, get it on Apple, Tidal, or wherever you stream your music. Finally, follow Audio Tree on social media for more fun content. I'm Psalm One, and I'm here for good music and good conversation. Till next time, stay dangerous. Peace. Thank you. We did it. We did it. Yeah. All right. So you guys want to do it for real now?